Okay, so let's take a look at starting a new project and using the project settings. So typically when you go File, New, your project settings are going to be right here by default in the Attributes Manager. If you need to get to them and they are not here for some reason, let's say that there was something here, you could either go to Edit Project Settings or you could hit Control or Command D on the keyboard and you're going to get to your project settings that way. There is another thing that I want you to be aware of that is different in Cinema 4D than most other 3D packages, and that's the fact that you can have multiple scenes open at one time. So if I go to File, New, and let's put a cone in this scene, let's go to File, New, and let's put a pyramid in this scene. If we go to Window, you can see that we have three different scenes open, and we can go back and forth between these. And I can even hold this down, Control or Command C to copy it, go over here, Command V, and paste it. So that's pretty powerful because you can't do that in most 3D apps. So that's pretty awesome, actually. Okay, so let's get back to the project settings. I'm going to do a Control or Command D, and let's take a look at what we have. So in here we have our project scale and we can go and change this kilometers, meters, centimeters, whatever you're looking for. And if you change this in your preferences, remember that's global, to something like feet, that's what it's going to be here. But if you wanted to change this to, let's say, miles, then it's only going to change it to miles for this particular project. If we go over to another project, you can see it's centimeters still. So this is only going to change it for the current project that you're working on. Important to note. We have our frames per second, and this can be changed over here in the render settings, or we can change it right here. So right now we're working at 30 frames per second. Our project time is where our current time indicator is in the timeline. So right now it says zero. If we move this over to 20, you can see our project time is now at 20. We have the minimum time and maximum time. So the minimum is 0, our maximum is 90. If we change this to, say, 120, then you can see that our maximum time has updated here as well. Now, let's say that you had an animation that was 2,000 frames, but you only wanted to look at a particular portion of that animation. You could put a preview min and maximum in here. So let's say we only wanted to look at between 10 and... 30, then you can see we're only looking at 10 to 30 here in our timeline now. We have a level of detail here, and it's at 100%. But let's say that we had a scene that was getting a lot of polygons in it, and it was really starting to slow down. This is a global parameter where you can take the level of detail for the entire scene down to something like 50% and really speed it up. Now, there are also ways that you can take the level of detail down for specific objects in the scene, but this is a global parameter here. Moving on, we can come down here, and if you want to change something like your default object color, you can do that here. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if you want to, it's available to you. Linear workflow is very complicated. If you really want to look at linear workflow, you can always right click and show help. And this has to do with the way the camera sees the colors in your scene. And it's important to note that if you are using linear workflow over here in Cinema 4D, you're going to need to use it or turn it on in your compositing package like After Effects. So we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get to the point where we're taking our scenes over into After Effects. We move over here to Info. This is sort of the metadata of the scene. So we can put author information, copyright, just information about the scene in general, and it'll be saved with the file. We have a Dynamics tab over here, so if you are using the Dynamics module for Cinema 4D, you're going to have this tab, and this gives us some additional control over the Dynamics here when we're using it in Cinema 4D. We won't cover this in this particular title, so we really won't go into this, but if you have the option to work with the Dynamics Engine, it is awesome here in Cinema 4D. Bottom line, when you start a new project, you want to come over to your project settings and get everything set up. 